Hey, good morning, y'all. Yes, sir. Jesus is Lord. Thank God. Jesus is Lord. The devil's defeated and the word works. But you know, you got to find out what the word says and then work it. I'm going to start a series today, Being Redeemed from the Curse of the Law. Over the book of Psalms, it says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So you ought to say it. I'm redeemed. Well, what am I redeemed from? Well, the Bible's very plain. gives us the curses of the law in Deuteronomy 28. And some of them are pretty horrible. But we're going to look at them and, and realize what we've been redeemed from. But the redemption comes because of what Jesus did. <clears throat> let me read to you. I've got my Bible here this morning. Let me, let me just read this to you today. We'll just be on this part today because it's so important. It says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's Galatians chapter 3, beginning here in verse 13. Christ, the anointing, and his anointed one, hath redeemed us. Now, redemption is complete. I talk about the great substitution sometimes, where Jesus paid the price for my sin. Jesus paid the price for my unrighteousness. Jesus paid the price for my sickness. Jesus paid the price for my unworthiness. Jesus suffered so I don't have to. Jesus became poor that through his poverty I may, might be made rich. So redemption is complete. So watch this. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Watch, really important. For, um, let me go back. For it is written, being made a curse for us, by uh, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Let me say it this way. Here's a man that's guilty, gone to court, had a lot of crimes against him. You know, he's a third-time offender, and he's going to go up for life. And he's guilty, and they proved him guilty. The jury accused him and proved him guilty, you know. And so the judge is going to pass the sentence. And he's going to be facing prison for life. And then this guy gets up from the back back there and walks up there and he says, Judge, wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it, Judge. He didn't do none of that. I did it all. Well, maybe he did or did not do it all, but he says, I want to pay the price. I did it. That man don't deserve to go to jail. And so the judge doesn't have any choice but to say, well, if you're claiming you did that and you're making a confession here that you did that, then this man, me and you, we don't have to go to jail because somebody else came forward and paid the price for us. <laughs> I believe you're getting that. Christ hath redeemed you from jail, from the curse, from being without God, not being able to talk to God, he, he took every bit of that curse. Even when he was on the cross, he said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? At that moment, he was without God, so I don't ever have to be without God. He went into hell. Now, some people don't believe that, but read your Bible. Jesus went into hell, so I don't have to. You don't have to. So when it says Christ hath redeemed us from the curse, it's the total curse. Everything that you find under the curse, Jesus paid the price for it, so you don't have to. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse because he hung on the tree and it's written, cursed is every man that hangeth on the tree. Now I'm going to jump way down here to verse 29. I want you to get this at the end of the chapter. And if ye be Christ, verse 29, then are you Abraham's seed, watch, and heirs according to the promise. Well, I belong to Jesus. I, I believe you do, but I belong, I belong to the Lord Jesus. Therefore, I'm redeemed from the curse, and I'm an heir unto the blessings of God that God promised Abraham because I've been grafted into the vine. Now, watch this. The president, the one we have now, his children are blessed. Now, they were blessed before he became the president, but they have rights. They, have, they can go into his office uh, they don't have to ask the security if I can go and talk to my daddy uh, because you know, the president there is, he's in the office, but he's also the father of those children. Well, listen, because Jesus paid the price, I am a child of Almighty God. So I can go right into his office. I don't have to go outside and ask security if I can get in. I can go right into the presence of God. That's why the Bible says, let us therefore come boldly into the throne room of God. We've got rights as a believer. And one of those rights is being redeemed from sickness and death and poverty and all these other curses that we're going to study. But you got to know that a curse is from the devil. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. And it's real simple. Bad things come from a bad devil. So you're redeemed from it. Somebody comes along and says, well, you know, you losing your job was a blessing in disguise. That's just a dirty old lie. 
maybe God's got a better job for you, but you need to listen to the Holy Ghost and go apply for the job rather than wait until you got fired and then say, well, that was a blessing in disguise. It was not because you went without. I'm watching my great son-in-law right now, Zoe's husband. He got laid off here about a month ago. Well, he's been going around trying his best to get a job. He hasn't been able to find one yet. I, I believe he does. But during this time, he's miserable. They don't have the money to buy things that they have to have. And they've got a uh, one baby already here. She's nine months old and another one on the way. That's not a blessing. That's a curse. Now, I believe he gets a better job. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. But you have to know what to resist, which is a curse, and that's why we're going to study him, and what to receive, which is a blessing that Jesus came to pay the price for the curse and also buy you the blessing. <laughs> we'll get into that, Deuteronomy 28. You're going to have to study this. Realize God's plain. God didn't leave this up to, well, you know, you never know what God's going to do. Let me see if I can figure out what this is. It's very plain, and I'll read them all to you in the next two or three days. So until I'm with you tomorrow, the next day, and a few days after, hey, remember, I'm the redeemed. You're the redeemed. Jesus is your Lord. The Word's working mightily in you, and we're coming from the bottom to the top. So until I'm with you tomorrow, saints, remember, hey, Jesus is Lord. I'm the redeemed. Thank God the Word works.